Okay, great. Well, it's 1 o'clock, so I'm going to get started with the webinar. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Gleason. I'm the president of Galaxy Marketing Solutions. And uh, the purpose of these webinars is totally an educational thing because, um, well, everybody needs to market and everybody needs to drive new people in. And um, also, like as a marketing firm, it's interesting, the more, the more educated the public at large are in marketing and, the, and our clients, the better the whole thing goes, you know, because obviously everyone's on the same page and we can work together in a great teamwork um, scenario. So that's what I, I love to create that and, and our greatest clients are really there with us and we can really work together and create great results. So um, I've been around dental marketing and marketing for a while now and I, I just, through the raw experience of that, I've accumulated a lot of knowledge and I've studied a lot and had a lot of like first-hand scenarios with marketing. Um, so I'm just spilling my guts in these <laughs> webinars and telling you everything I know. So um, this week we're actually going to take up a couple of technical subjects and I wanted to just tackle these. I'm honestly not going to get into all the super fine details of everything because um, it is very technical, but I want to make sure that you have enough understanding of these things um, so that when they come up you know the basics of it and can kind of think with it. Because uh, these, these are two marketing um, platforms or actions that are not going away and we just need to learn about them. So one of them is Google AdWords, which is also known as pay-per-click advertising. And the other one is this thing called search engine optimization, which uh, is generally a huge mystery to people. Like, what is this? So um, what I'm going to do is launch into the slideshow here and just go over, go over everything and um, definitely chime in with any questions you have. So here we go. And the subject of this webinar is what the heck is Google AdWords and for that matter, what is search engine optimization? So now um, these terms, Google AdWords and search engine optimization, have you already heard of these before? Are you familiar with them a bit? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Uh, is one more confusing than the other or are there any like, what is that type of feelings about these things? I think Google AdWords is a little, um, but I would love some explanation on that. Yeah, no problem. So we're actually going to cover both. So what I realized in putting together this webinar is, so both Google AdWords and search engine optimization are calculated to um, make your website visible and drive people to it. And I realized I couldn't really talk about AdWords or SEO without talking about some website basics because, uh, you know, if, the, if your website is not compelling and um, doesn't really deliver its message quickly and convert people into callers or people walking in the door, like if your website's not set up, you could spend one zillion dollars on these other things and it's not, it's going to fall down right at the point of the website and I don't want that to happen. So, um, so to answer those questions, I have to back up and take a moment to discuss your website because if you're going to take actions to drive people to your website, you have to make sure your site is set up to deliver your message and convert those visitors. So the very first thing um, is you, in this day and age, you have to have this thing called a responsive website. Are you, have you heard this term before? Are you familiar with it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. And I might be coming in on a little bit of a caveman level for some of you, but I just at least have to touch on it so that, um, so that everyone is, is up to speed. So um, responsive is a technical term. That means that the website automatically adjusts in size depending upon whatever device you're using. So whether it's a desktop, laptop, tablet, or, or smartphone, um, it will automatically adjust in size and be easy to read and easy to navigate. And this is a website that we did. This is a real live example. And you can see how it automatically adjusts in size to the, um, to the cell phone. And have you ever had the experience of trying to look something up on your cell phone and it's not optimized for a cell phone and you're having to like pinch it and you're trying to read and navigate it, maybe even have to fill in some data and um, it gets a little bit taxing. Would you agree? It's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a stretch and in today's like um, immediate gratification world, like that, that could be just too much of a challenge for some people and they would just move on to the next site because your site wasn't um, easy to use. So that's one of the first steps. You've got to have a responsive website. 
And just in creating your website, you have to have the viewpoint that you have only a few seconds of a visitor's attention. So your home page has to deliver all the key information someone will need to understand who you are and to make them feel comfortable enough so they can make the decision to reach out to you. And uh, I want to bring this up because, um, you know, a lot of times it's a pretty primitive thing. You know, remember that marketing is an emotional level subject. You know, what you're trying to do is strike at people's emotions, arouse those emotions, because it's, um, when you hit the emotions, then that leads to action. So emotion precedes action. So a lot of times people want to come onto a website and just, like, what does the doctor look like, you know? Does he look friendly? <laughs> it could be very basic stuff. And if pictures of the doctor and of the staff are kind of buried in the back pages of the, um, of the website, you know, like um, meet the staff or whatever, like in today's world that might be too buried and, you know, someone might just skip it. So you want to have that stuff in your home page. So um, these are the key elements you should have on your home page. And again, I'm starting from the rock bottom. You have to have your contact information. That seems very primitive, but it's true, and we've found websites that don't have that. Or at least, or we found websites that are trying to be really discreet, you know, or something where they have the core important contact information at the way bottom of the site, and really it should be very prominent at the top. Okay. Um, the next thing we really recommend is to have a survey button right on your home page, right on the slideshow. Um, are you all familiar with using surveys and buttons and that kind of thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So um, what we've seen is, is sometimes people just kind of dream up what they think people are interested in, you know, like a bright white smile or something like that, when um, really an important thing is to take the time to get surveys done on your public so you really find out what's important to them. And in most cases, a bright smile may come up, but it's not nearly as popular as, you know, a gentle dentist who listens to my needs or um, healthy teeth and gums and that kind of thing. So you get the surveys done, and then you put those buttons right on your home page because it will connect people and it'll, um, they'll get really curious. Um, the new patient offer should be prominently displayed. There should be a nice picture of the doctor portrayed as like a normal guy, you know, a normal friendly person. <laughs> No scrubs and dental tools in his hands. That stuff is not popular, you know. I mean, everyone knows when they go to the dentist that they're going to be worked on, but, like, the actual sight of the, the tools and stuff, it's just not a warm and fuzzy experience, so you, you want to skip that. Um, and then other great photos of the actual staff can only help. The more real your sight is, the better. So if you don't have photos, I totally recommend that you just schedule a photo shoot with a pro who will get you great images. Usually it's only a couple hundred dollars to get somebody in for a couple of hours or an hour. And then you have some great material you can work with. And then there sh should be a short biography of the doctor. Right on, This is all on the home page, right on the home page. Like, okay, you went to blah, blah, blah university. He spent this much time doing this, blah, blah, blah. Really that's, you know, in today's fast food and fast consumption world, all they want is out of the glance, you know, does it look like this doctor is well trained and he's going to take care of me. They're not going to know all the details, honestly, but if there's a couple paragraphs that really, okay, he trained, trained at USC and he did a, his internship here and he went to Costa Rica and helped people with dentistry here, um, that's enough for instant, instant digestion and they'll go, okay, he's a good guy. And then um, the thing that I've been really preaching about recently is to be gathering up testimonials and reviews and getting those posted right on the home page because that's, um, in many cases, the clincher. And I know I'm repeating myself, but <laughs> it's proven to be such a big deal that I just say it every time that um, the more you can gather testimonials and reviews and get those, broad, get those really published and visible, the more it's going to close somebody to, to go to you. All right, I know that was quick because a lot of you probably know this, but I just wanted to hit on it. So we're going to move on. Um, and finally, you want to take the viewpoint of the visitor. This is a key marketing skill. So this your, And this is a drill I would like you all to do, is actually look at your home page newly. You know, sometimes like you're like, yeah, it's my home page, and you kind of forget what it, how it comes across to the new person. So look at it newly today. And... Check, you know, does your homepage provide enough data um, to put you at ease enough to cause you to call in and make an appointment? So I'd like you to, to do that little drill. Okay, now we're going to launch. So does that all make sense?
I know yes. that was fa yes. I know that was the fast version, but um, I wanted to cover it really quick. So now we're going to launch into uh, the meat and potatoes of search engine optimization. So this is an acronym, SEO. You hear it all the time. And what SEO is a blanket term that covers a lot of different things, and it covers the strategies, techniques, and tactics used to increase the visibility and the number of visitors to a website. Um, it's a tech subject, but here are some of the key points. Um, you have to have a sufficient number of keywords in the copy or text of your website, but not too many. Um, Google guys are really, the, the Google robots um, that, that uh, index websites and size them up and judge them, they are very smartly programmed, so they will detect if someone's really trying to stack the deck. Like if you're a dentist in San Francisco, and in every sentence you put the word San Francisco, you know, that obviously comes across as you're trying to like unnaturally stack the deck um, so you get found by Google, and Google will actually detect that effort, and they'll actually penalize you for that. So it has to come across as real, just like you're a writer, you know, you're writing to real people. Um, and then you want a separate page for each dental treatment and keywords in the page titles. And then again, you want to make sure the copy is written for humans to read and not computers. And then another action you do is you um, register your website and internet directories, such as Facebook, Google+, Twitter, um, City Search, which is, you have to pay a little bit for that. Um, there's a thing called Glassdoor, which is um, permits employees to rate their employer. And there's, there's a lot of these, but another one is Insider Pages, RateMDs, and ZocDoc. And then you want to encourage your patients to put in reviews of your practice. All right, now that's just an overview, and I'm going to start to get into the, you know, some detail in each one of these. Are you tracking with me so far? Yes, we are. Okay, good. All right, so let's get on to it. So search engine optimization. So this is calculated to increase your organic ranking. You familiar with this term, organic ranking? Um, this is not about broccoli or organically raised produce. It is actually, your organic rank is the position where Google is placing your website as a result of what it searched for. So if I'm a dentist in San Francisco and someone plays, uh, says San Francisco dentist, where I come up is my organic rank. In, in an ideal world, I would come up on the first page. Um, that's not always the way it is, and usually the people who are on the first page have um, gotten the help of actually a professional SEO person to help do all of the continuing action necessary to push them up. Um, so it's organic because it is created naturally over time by taking the actions that will cause Google to recognize your site and give it a good rank. Organic is the opposite of paid advertising. Paid advertising is where you simply pay to be seen on page one of Google, and that's the realm of Google AdWords, which we're going to cover. Um, for example, I would like you all uh, to type in your city and dentist and see where you come up, because that will be your organic rank. Um, and you should check it out. Do you see your website on the first page of the search results? And if not, SEO actions will help you move up. That's the purpose of them. If you are on the first page, great. Know what you're doing and keep it up because you're obviously on the right track. All right. So here's a live example. So um, I did this the other day just to give you something to look at. I typed in New York Dentist. And so when you look, uh, many of you may already know this, but like these, this top area and down the side, you see where it says ad? Those are ads, and those, um, those are people using Google AdWords. What we're talking about right now are these search results right here. And these are people who have gotten themselves onto the first page of Google, uh, and that's their organic rank. So this is like really well done. This Premier Dental Associates of Lower Manhattan, these guys have done a good job. And they've gotten, they come up number one for New York Dentist. And then the other people are this Bensonhurst Dental Care and Dr. Michael J. Y., uh, Wade. So the, the plus of doing SEO is that this is their territory now. When you do Google Ads, these are paid for, and when you stop paying for them, obviously you disappear. 
But when you're building up your search engine optimization, it's it, you're growing the roots, you know, and you're really getting your foothold in on the internet, and you're getting your foothold in on coming up when people search for these keywords in your area. And so, um, it really is something that has to be worked on. So, the key points of SEO, this is a techie subject. So, you have to hire someone who's properly trained and can show you samples of results. You need someone who has made this their profession, because there's a lot to learn about it. Um, a great organic rank is built up over time, so start the SEO actions and let them develop. But your SEO person should be able to show you monthly progress. And then you, look, you know, in your own office, you can contribute to your organic rank by encouraging patient reviews. And then the other thing you can do from your end to help your, your ranking on Google is um, keep updating your site routinely with new news, blog posts, new photos, etc. like on the ground stuff. This is like uh, the people who work on your search engine optimization are hungry for new news and things they can promote and things they can put out as press releases and um, put out across the internet. That, you know, that kind of material is really, really, um, really, really important. And so um, getting your website updated with that stuff and then forwarding it to whoever's working in your SEO is really going to help the whole machine there. So now, Google AdWords um, is basically the other approach on how to get found on the Internet. And this is a paid advertising service. So it's the name that Google gave to their um, pay-per-click advertising. So it's an advertising service by Google. And what you do is you set up a monthly budget for the advertising. So we recommend um, uh, allocating at least $1,000 per month because every time someone clicks on your ad, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. And the cost of the clicks will vary depending upon the keywords you're using. They literally have an auction. Whoever is running your, your Google AdWords will attend an auction, just like a farmer might attend an auction to pick up some new cows. Um, your Google AdWords specialist will go to an auction to um, basically bid for and get the ability to use um, the important keywords that are really going to draw attention to your office. And in some areas, those um, keywords can be pretty expensive, like New York, you know, the, the keyword New York or New York dentist. Like, you know, every time someone clicks on that, it could cost you several dollars. I've heard ten dollars, you know. But by the same token, if it helps you to get found and brings in that patient, I've heard a new patient is worth anywhere from like eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars, so it well pays for itself. All right, so you only pay when people click the ads. The ads are focused on keywords. It's a very good city marketing campaign where people are more like tech oriented and are used to looking at their phones all the time and finding things on their phone. And then you can do a lot of things to um, tailor make the campaign so it really fits your area. So you can divide the campaign allocations between like your ads will show up on desktop, mobile, and tablet at different locations and at different times. Um, so just as an example of that, um, you know, in real life examples I know of are like at lunchtime, you're at like starting from maybe 11.30 and going to like 2.30, we can have your ads show on mobile devices, you know, so as people leave the office and go out for lunch and are checking their phone, your ads will come up and they'll find you specifically at that time and on that device. Then starting around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we can switch it up so that now when they're starting to arrive home and they might be switching over to their laptop or switching over to their desktop, your ads are targeted to now start to appear on those devices and in like the surrounding suburbs. So you can get that, that targeted on this subject. Um, and so for that reason, Google AdWords professionals get the best results for the least money spent because this is the thing you need to know about Google AdWords. Google is a bunch of super intelligent, sophisticated mind type of people. And um, another element of Google that you may know about is Google tends to change up what they do a lot. You may have heard of this. And they make these big shifts in their operating basis and they don't broadcast it. It's like proprietary data. Um, so whoever is running your campaign needs to be enough on the ball to and know the game well enough to be able to detect when something has changed 
and to get on the ball of it because if he's sharp, he'll be able to leverage that change and get more out of your AdWords while the rest of the people running AdWords are still catching up. So we really, really encourage, you know, using someone who's Google certified and really has experience in this game so you get the best return. All right, and moving on. So here's just a little visual, again, of search results. And again, it's like the guys in the top and then the guys down the side. These are paid for, they paid to be there. And they're utilizing the tool Google AdWords. And what it is, the way we recommend using it is, um, I mean, I, you know, in the world of marketing, what can you say? Ideally speaking, everybody does everything. You know, I mean, that would be your ultimate ideal scene. And just marketing flat out on every avenue. Um, you know, not every budget permits that or whatever. So what we recommend is running, you know, as you're getting started with your search engine optimization and maybe you're a few pages back and so forth, while you get started on SEO actions, run a Google AdWords campaign so that people can find you on an immediate basis. Um, because this thing about page one is, it's a thing. You know, I don't know about yourself, but if you look at your own um, search habits, you know, if you just kind of recall or, or next time you're searching for something, you, you pay a little additional attention, is that page one is a big deal. And, um, you know, I've heard varying stats, but they all kind of add up to the fact of, um, if you're not on page one, the chances of you being found are drastically reduced. So um, AdWords are a great way to get that key real estate on page one while you're building up your organic ranking at the same time. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right, and here's a little tech details about Google AdWords and another reason why you really need someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, not all keywords are created equal. For example, if someone were to search for a dental implant, this is most likely somebody who is just looking like, what is a dental implant? Like, what is the definition of a dental implant? Or just wants to know how it works. And they're kind of just curious about what it is all about. Now, in contrast, if you had someone that was doing dental implant Harrisburg, this guy is probably looking for, hey, I, look, I live in Harrisburg. I've been told I need an implant, and who's the best guy for me? So whoever sets up your AdWords account needs to have this kind of intelligence about it where they are um, they're hooking you up with the right keywords that actually are indicative of somebody who's actually looking to get that service and not just like, hey, I always wondered what an implant was. Maybe I'll look it up. You know, that's not necessarily the guy we're trying to target. All right. And moving on, like here's an example of an actual AdWords account that we're running right now. Uh, we actually are using 1,862 keywords with this doctor. Utilizing those keywords, 369 ads have been put together that get shown on the internet depending upon what's being searched for. And then another little technical point is this thing called a negative keyword. Have you ever heard of that term before, negative keyword? If you have not, I wouldn't be surprised because this is a little bit more of a technical insider type of piece of information. But the thing is is that um, someone who's on the ball with managing AdWords will also set you up with negative keywords, which is to say words that when they're put in, you don't want your ad to come up because it's not something that you want, you don't want your ad to come up. And here's an example. Like let's say you have a dental spa and some, some dentists go for this, and they actually have their whole dental office is set up like spa. I mean, literally, they'll have like, you know, hot towels, and they'll do, um, you know, they'll do these things, they'll soak your hands, and they'll do all these spa-like things um, while they handle your dentistry. So um, that's a particular niche. Now, if somebody just put in spa, we wouldn't necessarily want your ad to come up because they're not even looking for a dentist. So there's a way to plug in um, negative keywords, which is to say when someone puts this in, don't show your ad. And that actually saves you money and prevents people from just randomly clicking on your ad who don't really have the intention of getting your service, if that makes sense. So this is all pointing back to having an AdWords manager that really knows what they're doing. This is just an illustration of, you know, being able to set the different um, geography. So you set, you know, a really tight radius at lunchtime and then you know, later in the day, it's going out to the surrounding areas when people have gone home. 
and um, and we'll see your ad when they're at home. This is how targeted it can get. And then this is an, uh, this is a live example from the inside of a Google AdWords campaign of how they've divided up the campaign um, to show up on computers, mobile devices with full browsers, and then tablets with full browsers. And we don't have to get into all these numbers and stuff. But just to give you an idea, like, you can really adjust this thing to meet your needs, but you need someone who knows what they're doing. You can also set the time. So this is in military time. So, you know, let's say it starts around 930, and it carries on to 1800 hours, you know, which is 5 p.m. So these are all things that you can adjust. You know, on Saturday you actually have it start a little bit later. And so this is all ways of allocating your budget so that it's, it's as on target as you can get it and you get the best return you can possibly get. Okay, so we're going to move on. So the conclusion is that this is a technical product and Google changes its rules often, so you will get the best results by paying an AdWords specialist to set up and manage your campaign. And then you need a large enough click budget to get good results. We suggest at least $1,000 per month. Um, you know, it definitely varies depending upon the area too. As you start to get into bigger urban areas like New York, Washington DC, San Francisco, Los Angeles, the, 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 the competition and the cost per click goes up. So um, as with any marketing, the more the merrier. So if you can do a larger budget than 1,000, it's only better. But you have to have your, um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is you have to have your estimation of effort in. Like you need a large enough click budget to really capture the leads. Um, and then just in terms of your own thought process, like when you hire somebody, so you'll have basically two expenses. You'll have the monthly expense of the expert who actually manages your campaign, and then you'll have your click budget, which is really paid directly to Google, and that's um, your budget for um, the clicks for that month. So there's basically sort of like two expenses to an AdWords campaign. However, a well done AdWords campaign definitely drives traffic in. You know, it gets you to the key point, the key real estate on the first page of Google. Um, and that's where people's eyeballs are. And what can you say? I mean, people turn to Google for everything. So it's a little bit whatever it takes to get where people will see you. And um, that coupled with an optimized website that really will engage and convert people, it's very, very effective. And a lot of our clients use this one-two combination and they drive a lot of people in. So that's the plus side of it all. All right, so I feel like I've just screamed through a lot of data. So I'd like to find out what questions do you have on that list? How can I help you understand this? Any questions? We don't have any questions. <laughs> okay. Do you already use um, both SEO and Google AdWords? Yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, good. Good, Don't good. Other mm -hmm. things like BackDoc and um, we use that sort of to help us manage our Google AdWords campaigns and our display yeah. ads and that. Yeah. What could, would you mind sharing a little bit about your experience with that or anything you've noticed from your end? Yeah. So using that sort of has been really powerful for us because mm. You know, navigating Google AdWords on your own as a business owner, unless you know a lot about Google AdWords, can be really confusing. Like, yeah. you know, it's really about coming up with the right keywords and figuring out the right demographic of people to share those keywords with and um, mo monitoring those campaigns and really putting enough money into them mm -hmm. is all part of the trick for us, you know. And when we started yeah. working with that sort of, they really helped us because they work with competitors, so they know what the deal is and how oversaturated the market is on a certain keyword and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that we might have thought were an excellent keyword to use, like Invisalign, for example, we yeah. learned quickly was a waste of our time and money because even though we're an orthodontist and there's lots of dentist offices, um, there's a ton of dentist offices in our local area that use Invisalign. And so when they work. right, so when they pull it up, they're going to see all those options. Right. Exactly. Right. So it's more competitive, but they also have a set up with other um, other keywords now that work better for us that allow us to see more of an increase in traffic to our website and more new patient calls. And we're using Call Tracker a lot to track those calls and to really yeah. see not only how they were referred, 
which is always an excellent source, but also to zero in on how we're training our people on the front end to answer the phones and what things to say and where right. they can move and stuff like that. And they will actually right. give us a printout of like which words we're pulling in the most the clicks and from which locations and right. you know how people search for that word. You know, we can also see we li we're close to Detroit here, so if mm -hmm. we have a traffic that's 10 mile radius around our office we might find that we want to scoot that demographic over because even though we might get a lot of new patients from the Detroit area, they might not be the best patients for our practice. Yeah, right. So it really has helped us to figure out a lot as far as where we're the most successful. Wow, that's really awesome. I mean, that's really good. And it sounds like you're getting some good advice, which is kind of like my whole, what I'm on the soapbox about is like, you know, like get some pro advice, you know, because it's a techie subject, you know, and, yeah. and it's sophisticated. It's a sophisticated platform, and the, and um, deal with people who know who know the ropes. Whatever you need to pay them, you know, um, should come back in the return of getting a better response on your AdWords. So that's right. that's what I'm preaching about today. <laughs> um, so there you go. Are there any other questions about SEO or AdWords or anything else? Okay, good. All right, well, good. Well, it's been my pleasure and honor, as always. Um, so we're going to come at it with more. Um, you know, we're coming in for these first several webinars. We're coming in at a pretty ground level just to make sure that everyone's really got the basics because that's, you know, that's the foundation. And then as we go along, we will start to get a little more techie and a little more advanced and things. Um, so forgive me if I've kind of repeated stuff you already know, but um, at the same time, those are the core basics. And even like, you know, a pro tennis player or a pro pianist, or whatever, they, you know, they always go back to the scales and the very fundamental things, and um, it's always kind of worth reiterating, but I'm going to develop these, and, you know, as more feedback comes in, I'm just going to really make sure it's tailored to what's going to be helpful for you, and, uh, and it's my pleasure. I'm at your service, and I'll see you next week, okay? Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll see you soon.